Hey there everyone, it's Haz here bringing you another quick guide to Dragon Quest Monsters The Dark Prince and today we'll be talking about a mechanic that surprised a lot of people that it's in this game and that's Shiny Monsters. As far as I know, Shiny Monsters are a new mechanic for the franchise and haven't really been part of older Dragon Quest Monsters, correct me if I'm wrong, and so The Dark Prince might be the first game where they appear, indicated by glittering stars around your new monster after a synthesis or a little purple icon next to their profile. So what are shiny monsters in Dragon Quest exactly, and are they something to worth looking out for? So shiny monsters can appear in Dragon Quest monsters now, but the only way you can acquire them, at least based on the demo experience, is through monster synthesis and not scouting. This process is very random with a low chance, and I think I got one shiny monster in 30 attempts for this video alone, which is around the 3% chance that I think might be even lower, considering I only had 3 shiny monsters in my 70 hours playing the demo, with hundreds of synthesis done, so needless to say, shinies are going to be really rare, but people are already predicting there might be special accessories or items to increase the chance of creating shinies in the future. Considering it's very hard to get a shiny for a monster you really want, there is fortunately a way to grind them out and it's still going to be extremely tedious, but at least it saves you hundreds of hours to get your desired monsters to be shinies, and that is by disabling autosave before synthesizing and reloading your save file before synthesis, trying the combination over and over and over again until you finally get a shiny and then save your game with the success. Like I said, it's still going to be tedious, this is actually how I got my shiny in 30 minutes of constantly trying it, and this is where the performance issues of Dragon Quest Monsters really gets annoying, as the loading times and the slowness of the game will be very apparent, and will slow down this process by like 30% I would say. Moving on to a more important question, do shinies matter in Dragon Quest Monsters, and are they important? Based on my experience and research on them so far, the answer will largely depend on your goals in the game, whether you're playing casually or you plan on dueling online, as it seems shiny monsters will be slightly stronger than your average synthesis. As you synthesize a shiny monster, there will be zero difference for it compared to a normal variant, but upon synthesis, shiny monsters get one or more of their stats chosen to have increased growth rate compared to a normal monster, in my test, ignore the different starting values, I didn't bother getting an identical family tree for my gremlin, but with simple math, you can see by level 8 both my gremlins have the exact same stat growths on each of their stats, except for MP and agility in this case, where my shiny has minus 1 agility, and 5 more MP than the normal variant. On level 8 this might seem like an insignificant difference between monsters, but depending on what the maximum level will be this could very quickly change with the growth rate of monsters into a much larger gap as levels rise up. The increased stat can be anything from health to even attack or wisdom so they can matter a lot. I mentioned that I didn't bother with the same family tree for my gremlins, so a quick note here that it seems the parents of a new monster can and probably will affect which stats are going to be favored by a shiny monster, as there has been reports of gaining more health with attack based parents, and more MP for caster type monsters as parents, but these will require lots of further testing once the game is out. Now in the demo it is impossible to check whether the shiny status does also increase the stat cap of monsters, or it only affects the growth rate of them. Hopefully it's only the growth rate, in which case, shiny monsters would only help in lessening the grind for perfect monsters, considering you can use various items in the game to boost your favorite monster stats further, but in the case that shinies will also increase the maximum stat cap of monsters, that's where we'll get into grinding hell for online, since then shinies will be a straight up better version of all our monsters, and in a tight competitive scene every stat will matter. Overall, the introduction of shiny monsters only seems like an unnecessary tedium in Dragon Quest Monsters that I personally hope to only be a minor starting boost for early game, and it won't have any other major benefits as the game goes on, since it only seems to increase the grind of the game by many, many hours, but having large differences between normal and shiny monsters will also cause an unhealthy online environment, where casual players will be scared away by all the grind necessary to combat people who will grind out every monster of theirs to be perfect. Perfect. Obviously for now we do not know the full picture and there are a few questions that needs answered mostly about stat caps and the various items they tease that will modify monsters and their abilities, these can all change the final look of the game, and then also who knows what other types of monsters might be at the very end, or dungeons that can improve your team further, 
so at least for now there is no reason to panic, but certainly worth staying tuned for more information about this feature. As the game comes out, I'll do my best to update you all about shiny monsters, so if you enjoyed this video make sure to like and subscribe as I will be covering a lot of Dragon Quest monsters and I already have quite a few guides for it that might help you prepare for launch. As always, thank you so much for the support on my Dragon Quest content, thank you for watching this video as well, take care everyone, and I'll see you all the next time.